Hello, this is Sally Henderson of Karnak Training. In this video, we're going to have a look at what's called the fight or flight response. This term is used to describe a series of biochemical changes that happen in our body when we're getting ready for a threat. Now, in our caveman ancestor days, the threats were physical ones, wild animals, the enemy. And our body would go through a series of changes to get it ready to do something physical, be it running away or standing there and fighting. We no longer have the physical threats that we once had. Our threats are more sedate than that. We've got angry customers on the phone or our boss is raging at us or something's just gone terribly wrong and the work's piling up and piling up and we're struggling to cope with it. So we have those sorts of threats today but our body still goes through this series of changes. So I want to take you through what those changes are to help you understand better what this fight or flight response is but it is very real for us today and we also then need to be able to deal with it. Our ancestors dealt with it through the physical release of either running or fighting and we don't tend to have that physical release now unless we're somebody that likes physical exercise and enjoys going to the gym and we can sweat it out to a degree. So let's have a look at this response and uh, see if you can understand a little bit better what goes on in your body when you're feeling under threat. In today's terms that's when we're feeling stressed. So we start off with a picture there of our brain. What's important for this is that there's a number of different elements to the brain. And today we're particularly interested in the thinking brain and then in the middle brain or the emotional brain. And that's where the hypothalamus sits. And that's a very important part of the brain when we're looking at uh, how these changes happen in our body. So let's start. We have some kind of problem that's either a real problem or it's something that we perceive to be a problem. How many times have we gone home from work and we've worried ourselves silly overnight over something that's happened and we imagine when we go in the next day that we're really, really going to get it uh, for something that's happened. So we've built it up in our heads overnight and then when we get in the next day, it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. So our brain can't distinguish between what is real and what is perceived. And I think it's important to remember that a lot of the problems that we think we have, we're putting on ourselves. The problems aren't truly there. They've been perceived. So let's see what happens in our head. Well, the thinking part of the brain starts to send alarm signals to the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, which is sitting in the middle part of the brain, it's in a different part of the brain. That's the main switch there for the stress response. And the hypothalamus then stimulates what's called the sympathetic nervous system. And within this part of the brain, a series of changes are made in the body. So this is what happens in our body. And you have felt some of these in times when you've been waiting to go in for an interview you'll feel yourself tense up or you'll feel your heart rate going a little bit more quickly. Or when you've been waiting to go on to do a presentation to a group of people, you'll feel your heart thumping perhaps, or your breathing is getting quicker. Uh, you might feel tension across your shoulders. Um, so these are the things that start to increase and it's getting our bodies ready to do something physical. And then further changes that happen are that blood is directed away from the extremities and the dig digestive system into the larger muscles designed to help us run or fight. And you've maybe experienced butterflies in your tummy. This is because your digestive system is closing down. In times when you need to do something physical, you don't want to be digesting your food. Your diaphragm and your anus will lock and your pupils will dilate and your hearing will become more acute. And these are all responses to help you cope with the physical threat, which, of course, in today's world, we just don't have the same physical threat that our ancestors had. And this is what's called the fight or flight response. And that's a phrase that was termed by a physiologist called Walter B. Cannon. Now, when this fight or flight response continues unchecked, which during times of chronic stress 
it will do, our bodies will stay in this state of heightened alert. There's other things start to happen which can start to have long-term negative effects. And our adrenal glands will secrete corticoids and these will inhibit many different elements of our body. So our digestive system is affected. Longer term, that may lead to stomach ulcers. Our reproduction system is affected. So in women, maybe we'll cease to have our monthly cycle. In men, perhaps there'll be fertility issues. Our growth and tissue repair system don't work quite so well. So we may not get over a cold quite so quickly. Our hair may start to fall out. Our nails may become affected. The responses of our immune system and our inflammatory systems is impaired and on a long-term basis some important functions in our body will begin to shut down. So if we continue over a long period of time with the fight and flight response unchecked we're going to become ill. So how do we try and manage this response? Well one of the ways that's recommended is what's called the relaxation response. And as soon as you decide that a situation is no longer dangerous, your brain stops sending those emergency signals to your brainstem, which in turn stops sending the panic messages to your nervous system. And as quickly as three minutes after you shut off those danger signals, the fight and flight response burns out and everything returns to normal levels. Now that's not to say that if you've had the fight and flight response within your system for long period of time that three minutes later it's going to switch off it isn't but for something like doing your presentation or waiting for your interview or even being caught up in a near miss when you're driving perhaps that in times like that where it's a one-off situation and you tell your brain that the danger's passed then within three minutes, you'll notice your heart rate has returned to normal, your breathing's returned to normal, and the butterflies are stopped in your stomach. So that's how quickly, if we understand what's going on in our bodies, that's how quickly we can turn it off. And one of the ways that we can instigate this relaxation response is through deep breathing, proper diaphragmatic breathing. So just to conclude this short presentation, if our mind perceives there is a threat, and remember it's the perception is important, the threat might not actually be real, but if our mind perceives that that threat is there, our body will stay on alert, ready to fight or flee. Over the long term, this will make you ill. So I think what's important is that you understand what happens in your body and you learn to recognise the signs of stress. So do you feel stress in your stomach? Do you feel it as muscle tension across your shoulders? Are you conscious of your heart beating more quickly than it should be? And there's all sorts of other signs that might be there around stress or perceived threats. So if you can understand what's happening in your body and learn to recognise those, then you can do something about turning it off far more quickly. And remember that one of the things we can do to help our body to relax is deep breathing. So there you have a short presentation on what's called the fight or flight response. And I hope there is something within that presentation that you can take from it to think about for your own situation and to learn from. Thank you for watching.